we have had 31 sessions before today. And so some of you will not know what you have been missing. You know, sometimes I tell people, okay, there's a recording go, but not so many people actually know what has been covered before they became aware of all these sessions we, we now do. So today is to help you to even see what have we been covering before now, and also importantly, to help you identify which ones are going to be super important for you. So that's why I've given us the slides ahead, you know, so that um, once we get to the one that is important to you, you will note it, you know, and then you can watch, don't watch it during the session. You watch it after the session. So let's get started. It's going to be a really fast paced one because I have about 31 different sessions to talk about. So we started this whole series, this weekly series last year, I think maybe May, right? And then we started first with me showing us, you know, dynamic arrays in Excel. Some people don't know that there are new formulas in Excel. Filter is a formula. We all know filter, but now there's a formula called filter. You know, the ordinary filter, once you filter and you extract the data and you put it somewhere else, if you go and add more data to the source, it does not translate to what you've done before. It's not connected, right? But then if you do this filter that is formula, it's always working on that. There's sort that is a formula too. So you know sort when you sort, if somebody has new data after you sorted, your the new data is not going to sort automatically alongside what you've sorted before. But then when you do is the formula sort, sort, it sorts, you know, all the time. So there are many new formulas, you know, unique that is like remove duplicate. And so that's what I covered here. And then I talked about Google Sheets, right? So if you are one of those who this is going to be important for you, please just go watch the recording. So it's something that uh, you have already. And then uh, the next one, I'm just reposting on the link. I noticed some people just joined. The slides I've reposted it. The one after that I did on pivot table, how you create management report. Actually, it's pivot table. I used to explain that it's easy to use pivot table to create management reports. So they are kind of linked anyway. Then there's text to row, there's data validation, there's duplicates, how you flex duplicates in data. So all of that again too are stuff that um, you can go and go through the session. Uh, let's see, why is it not trying to play? Ordinarily, this thing should play. Oh, I know why. This is a PowerPoint. Uh, my, in fact, Microsoft of, is beginning to give us too much problem. Enable, this is the reason. That enable was not on. That was why it didn't play. So let me just uh, go back to where we are. All right. So, great. So here I talked about all of that. And then, uh, you see? See what we do, it's a lot, you know. I think I must have tried to cover it all and exceeded time. But then if you are someone who, these are things that are relevant to you, you don't know some of them, or you feel you can gain some new insights from what I cover, please go watch the session, okay? And then I, I try to put the practice file also alongside. So when you are watching the session, you most likely also see the practice file in the, in the description of the video. Okay, so then, we had also a session that uh, we started bringing in guests. We started bringing in people to come and share their own experience because we found out that there are so many of us or so many people who they want to know how the, the experts, the guys who are very good in Excel, what is their unique story? You know, What is it that they did differently than the rest of us? Or what is it that uh, you can learn from them and maybe apply? Because I've seen people who say, ah, I can only use the aspect that is related to my work. Some other people say, you know what, my work doesn't even require me using all of this, you know, and um, how will I then understand and, and develop my skills if I'm not even able to, how can I get internship? How can I get this? How can I get that the opportunities to apply what I'm learning? What we have learned from most of this session is the fact that not everybody took got that chance. So, a clear example is Victor Momo. He's actually the best person I know in Nigeria on Excel. Like he knows Excel better than any other person I know. And he's someone all of us respect in the community. And you guess what? He's not into consulting. All of this he learned. Most of all, what expertise he got is by three things. 
reading, participating in forums. So he goes online, he helps other people answer questions. It's very popular on Mr. Excel forum. And then, and also on our own forum too, you know, Nigeria, he shares his knowledge. And then he helps people with their problems. So people, is in petroleum industry, people in, a, in, in other industries, they will send stuff for him to help with. And then, you know, by that, he begins to get even knowledge of those other industries, right? So that's one thing he explained, and he talked also about how you overcome frustrations when you are learning Excel. So if you want to get insight from that, then awesome, you should go check it out. Then also there's another, there's an MVP in Excel. Currently, I think he's the only Excel MVP in Nigeria. I used to be an Excel MVP, but now my category has been moved to Power BI. So he's the only Excel MVP currently in Nigeria, uh, David Abiola. He to share this journey, you know, how he went from, you know, teaching people in uh, at um, uh, NYC camp. And so his own journey was, was really, really interesting. So in case if you are also looking for inspiration from someone whose journey is completely different from the journey most people who are around us, you know, someone who had to go through the corporate space took. Uh, he went on a very, very completely different um, trajectory to become a global expert in the in this uh, our final data analysis and Microsoft Excel space. Okay, so uh, by the way, I need to also tell people in the. the Excel group. If somebody can help me tell people in the Nigerian Excel group that they, because I'm beginning to get to the aspect where the guys who are in the community they also share the knowledge they shared and how it benefits us all. My phone has decided to disappear. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead. So uh, so this is one session by Ken Deo Michele. He's one of the uh, stalwarts in the community and he also shared his own journey. You know. He shared how he is much more in the uh, is he, is much more in the NGO space, public sector and NGO space. He shared how you know what is peculiar to that space, how he started his um, expertise and all of that. So people took a lot of learning too from his own section. Okay, so again, you can go watch that to see how those in that space can grow their career and all of that. So I move on now to. The sixth session. So here we discussed new features in Excel, the forecast tool, and uh, I talked about a lot of new tools. I gave links for how you can even read up on Microsoft, um, how you can keep track with Microsoft updates. So you will know what your versions have and know what has been added so that you will know maybe you are even doing yourself a, a this. Uh, a disadvantage or what's the word now you're doing yourself harm by not, by not even updating your microsoft excel and you're now struggling more to do something using the longer approach but than the one you will have been able to use if you have downloaded an update that has a newer tools newer tool that will have helped you to do what you are trying to do faster so nowadays updating your excel can be a lifesaver thing it's not a thing of of i just want to be able to brag that i'm using the latest no those updates come with new tools that make you be able to do things faster, okay? So I talked about all of those new tools and I specifically even dedicated a particular part of the session to forecasts, you know, how you use forecast to it's one of those new tools in Excel. Well, it's no longer new, but then it was new. There, we also did in the seventh section, in the seventh uh, one we did, we talked about Power Query, you know, all the amazing things Power Query can do, and uh, I, I call it uh, the magic of Power Query because some of the things it does is magical, right? So if you are someone who are, oh, we are not fully aware of the capabilities of Power Query, I want you to go and watch this session because it's easier for you to understand what you are missing when you see how come some of the common things we do that takes time in Power Query is just like a click and click here, click there, like four clicks and you are done. Right, so those are the things I covered in this one, and then after that we moved on to uh, the session. After that was on conditional formatting, so the magic of, of conditional formatting, and then I talked more again about dynamic arrays and some formula tips. So uh, just let me remind some people uh, in the general group so that they will not blame me that I forgot to remind them. 
So just uh, let me grab the link and quickly. Over here, almost done. Okay, so done. Ah, thank you. Ah, awesome. Uh, Mr. Tsundi has already helped me. Great. So going on, uh, we talked about the different conditional formatting magic and all that you can do with additional things you can do with dynamic arrays, formula tips. Okay. And then I, the session after that, the ninth session was on must know Excel formulas. So what are the formulas that you should be aware of? Uh, for some people, it will be like a refresher, but uh, in the end, when we went through it, we found out that there are some formulas that some people are not aware of, that they know the longer route. You know, there are some things you want to do. That's the funny thing in Excel. There, is, there are more than one ways to do the same thing. Some people know the way that takes, it's like the Israelite journey way. <laughs> you know, one that takes you 40 years for something you could have done in 40 days, right? You know, that kind of thing is what we uncovered when we were doing this. We found out that some people were using a much more difficult route for doing some things. And so I tried to, uh, and that was why I decided to rename it as the most most no Excel formulas. Okay, so again, if you feel that your formula knowledge is weak, you can go there and be uh, at least be aware of those ones you must master. Then as a follow-up from that, we decided to pick out some specific formulas that can be difficult to digest for people and to expand, expound on the ones that uh, People already use, but they don't know that those formulas have some extra capabilities. So you'll see. So I, I decided to cover some product, which is a magical formula. I, ha I know of a company that they call themselves some product because that's how powerful the formula is. They decided to just use it as the name of their company and they do Excel consulting anyway. And there's index. You know, if you watch the sessions that has happened recently, you will see um, Victor covered some product and people were like, whoa, and he had to do a part two on it, and he's, he's cooking up something for us on index. So again, uh, this can be a wake up call for some people who use some of these formulas or don't even use them at all to understand the value that they can get. And now they can be more productive in doing some of the common things they need to do that takes time. Okay. So after that, we went into uh, descriptive, diagnostic, and it is a mouthful to call. <laughs> so we had our venerable Dr. Francis Okeye. He's a lecturer at Lagos Business School. So, you know, he's, he, at least he decided to open our eyes to some of those aspects of Excel that some people don't even know exist. You know, those statistical analysis portions of Excel, the data analysis toolbox, and then how you can carry out the, the meaning of some of those analytics that have been bundled into those uh, particular toolbox, the data analysis tool. So again, from here, we were able to, maybe I should just try and zoom. Maybe you will see how far we went because this session was really, really, some people didn't even know that Excel could do some of the things that it showed. You know, the only thing that uh, Python had and SPS and Starter can be the only, or the tools that could do some of the things it showed us. So if you know you are in that space where you need to do some kind of, uh, analytics that is deeper than what you see easily on the Excel. You find out that you and you are good in Excel. It's just better to go and watch it and see instead of breaking your head and thinking you must use this, you must use a Python and R, you find out that you might be able to use Excel for some of those things. OK, so then we had a session on Power Query again. So this was another session on Power Query. One cannot exhaust how much you can do with Power Query. So this was again another session on Power Query or a lot more, a, a much more robust one that was just purely Power Query. The previous one was a mix of Power Query and some things. This one was just dedicatedly on Power Query. So I, again, I decided to use some of the real life examples I take in classes, compress them into a one hour delivery session, and then, you know, help people see that Power Query is really an amazing tool, right? So if you have not been using Power Query before now, I want you to please watch this session so that you will not uh, you will not deny yourself of the value that comes from using power query and this one was really different uh, so this was on vba and more importantly on user form i wish uh, i wish oken is here because there was one uh, 
almost emotionally charged conversation that happened in our VBA group. So he was trying to say there is nothing you know he could have we we can do with user form that he could not have achieved with the new additions that have come into Excel and SharePoint. And um, do me, I don't agree, but then again, that's life. Sometimes if you really want to use what you know to achieve what you want, you will definitely achieve it. But I know that there are some things you will do with user form uh, that you won't do with those other ones. But anyway, I wanted people to be aware of all of this. Me, sometimes the approach I take is, let me even know it, then I'll decide whether I will use it or not, right? Sometimes I find out that uh, it works nice because sometimes you will just find out that you'll be in a situation where this one will just be the best thing to use, right? So anyway, user form is one of those tools uh, that are available only in VBA and allows you to create like an application in Excel, something that becomes user interactive and it's easy to use. That's what you know, it's lovely about it. When I demo this in class and people in one hour, they build something that is like a full application that has like submit button, that has like clear button, you know, you put in controls, you, they are amazed. They're always like very proud of themselves. Even though in the beginning, they're always like, ah, this is programming, ah, this is, uh, this is not, I'm not ready. Let me go and first of all, master the formula. I'm still struggling with formulas. In the end, this is easier than some formulas, right? So I want you to, you know, if you feel that uh, you want to use my approach of let me even be aware of it, then let me decide whether I'll use it or not, then please watch this one, right? So uh, then I did another one after that that was now on VBA proper. So what is even VBA about? Why would you want to know uh, macro what's even macros you know? so the thing is this macros is a general term for most um, popular software right so if you use autocad you'll find out that there will be a macro section uh, i use notepad plus plus it has a macro let me show you i have notepad plus plus on my if i open notepad plus plus it has a macro you know, this is these are things that ordinarily you don't think of as having macros in them uh let me go to not part plus plus. I'm just trying to explain what macro is. Macro is a general term just to show you that the programmers, the software developer has put in a way for you to automate things, a way for you to extend the capability of the software beyond what they have pre-programmed for you. So it's just as if I've said, you know what, I've built a house and I'm selling it to you, but I've made it built in such a way that if you want more rooms, you can add your own extra room. You know, you can add do some customization on it. You know, so the same way too, they build the software, but they know some people might want to use it for something much more than what they've programmed there. Then let them have their own way of adding their own extra features. So that's what macro generally is. So now every macro, uh, for every company, every product, there will be the sort there will be the programming language that is underneath the macro. So for Excel, the programming language, in fact, for the whole of Microsoft Office, the programming language is VBA, Visual Basic for application. So that's what is the difference between VBA and macro. Macro is ability for you to extend the tool beyond the what the programmers, the developers have, have shipped along with it by default. So the same thing too in Excel, you want to have extra capabilities, then you go to macros. So when you're in macros, the language that you're going to be typing in the codes at the VBA, Visual Basic for Application. So I did all this explanation and we tried to do some simple macros in the, in the session. So if it's of interest to you, then please go ahead and watch that session. And after that, why is my screen going on and off? Okay, great, come back on. So after that, we did a session on Excel online. So some people do not know that there is Excel online and it has advantage. And the funny thing, some of them know Google Sheets, but they don't know that Microsoft too has the equivalent of Google Sheets. And if you are the kind of person that your company already has OneDrive, SharePoint, you know, don't just stress yourself about Google Sheets, use Excel online because you will get a lot more advantages. You can be able to share, you can, be able to let what you have done reflect somewhere else. Like for me, 
uh, some things I want to do, I find out that when I use Excel online, I'm able to bring it to power to, to Power BI easier. So I will just be able to tell the client that, you know what, put your data here, and as you are putting the data in there, it will flow into Power BI, it will flow into some other things, and it will not be a case where people will not be able to, it will be a case where people should not have access will have access. But if you are this Google Sheet, it's not possible until you make it a way that anybody can have access to it, which is dangerous if you are working with a company data. You don't want to give just anybody access, right? Anyway, I'm just trying to point out that Excel Online, you know, has advantages and has some things that you don't have in your... So, like, um, there's one common one. I think there's one... Is it the drop-down? Data validation as such, as a search feature in Excel Online. There's some, there's Office Script. So we're going to have someone from Microsoft Head Office next week. He's going to demo to us Office Script. You know, that is only for Excel Online. There are some things now that Microsoft is creating that is just for Excel. And the biggest of it is collaboration. Uh, with Excel Online, you can collaborate. You can have multiple people work on the same file. And there will never be issues, you know. There will be version control to some extent. You know, there will be ability for you to know who has access, remove somebody's access, give some, another person access. And then you will never be worried about the version. You will always have all the new features, new formulas that come into Excel. Unlike if you're using a desktop, depending on the version you're on on the desktop, you might not have some formula. But when you're using Excel online, there's no different versions. There's one version for all, and that version has all of the new formulas. So that's one of the advantage. So I talked about all of these and some use case scenarios for Excel online. So if you're interested in that, that would be then it will do you good to watch this session. So after that, we had some amazing guys from Microsoft. Not one, not two, three guys. We had uh, three big shots from Microsoft come to demo to us, you know, what the, let me just scroll back. I wanted to post it at that level so you see their names. You know, uh, Guy Honking, Ira, sometimes it's a, I, I find it, I, a bit not easy to call their names, except Guy Honking that his name is quite, it's quite very easy to call. Uh, once their name comes up, I'm going to pause and great. So I'm going to pause here. Great. So we had these guys show us all of the new things Microsoft has been adding to Excel. And these are the guys who are building it. If you, if you search on Microsoft documentation and announcement, and even when they have them, um, like next, tomorrow we'll start the MVP. These are the guys who are building it, who are telling us their plans. When you want to tell them what they should have, they are the ones you will talk to and tell. And so it was an opportunity for us to interact with them. And someone asked questions, you know, Python. And he answered, he said they are thinking about it. And uh, I don't want to say things I'm not supposed to say, but, you know, they tell us what they are doing, you know. So anyway, this was a very nice way for us to see what Microsoft was doing and they answered questions about what people want to see and what the direction is. Is Microsoft going to stop VBA and put something else there? They said no. So there were some questions that people asked that only Microsoft could have answered and these guys are the same guys who are actually doing the thing at Microsoft. And so it was a very great one. Uh, you can go watch it if you want to be aware, you want to get an insider view into what Microsoft is doing in Excel. After that, we had talked about uh, some interesting new formulas, LED, Lambda. If you have not heard of these formulas, please just go and watch the session, right? You know, I don't know where to start explaining them to you from. But then they say these formulas make, especially the Lambda, makes Excel tooling complete. So those who are in the programming space, they will understand what that means. You know, Excel now becomes like a full-fledged programming language, okay? Like, yeah. So uh, we did that. Then after that, we had another session, uh, which was a, a, a guest session by the one and only Pringle Hegbe. Man, this session was loaded. He was so down to heart and explaining to us his career journey, you know, the things that happened uh, in some really interesting ways to even how Excel helped him to become an MD, how he got opportunities, how he got deals with University of Port Harcourt and he became a lecturer, you know, as 
an adjunct lecturer or you could you know visiting lecturer the kind of things i see only in foreign institutions a lecturer that is not full-time staff but still a lecturer you know i don't know of any other person our you know our educational system they don't usually like that they prefer that if you are working in the company just stay there let them hold their own lecturing job but you see all of what he does in excel opened up so much opportunities for him that he got deals he even had to go to us for on behalf of uh, what's the name of this sp this society for petroleum something something engineers so you know he keeps saying that excel catapulted his career and he's the md of an oil servicing firm and it was because of the platforms that he got to because of his excel skills and both national and internationally that he got the attention of the company sponsors and they and they just singled him out and invited him and decided to make him the md for the company and you know a whole lot of things came his way because of excel and he shared generously you know how he and I advice for people too so i learned a lot a lot of people learned from it oh great somebody even know him already here so lion guys already saying he's a big week in society for petroleum engineers so if you want to get some of the motivation many of us got from that session ah uh, please go and watch it then we had another interesting person i i so when i first knew him which was i think 2017 there about he was working with hygiene he was a doctor you know i think he's still a doctor i think once you're a doctor you're still a doctor but he has abandoned his uh, speedometer what did they call that thing expect whatever you guys call it he has abandoned all his gadgets all his doctoral gadgets a medical doctor gadget and he's now a, he's a data doctor now he's doctoring data but then he shared his journey and it was very interesting you know how being a doctor and then he worked in a company he worked first of all with an hmo where he was on the doctor side of the hmo stuff you know being a doctor actually and then uh, they needed to do analytics just the basic reporting around, you know, the different hospitals, drugs and prescriptions and all. And because he had a flair for data, it was easier for him. So he was doing it, you know, relatively easy. And then gradually that made him more important, you know. So you find out that the MD begins to jump over many people to get him to do things. Something that somebody else should have done and that one was taking forever to do. And they wanted to have a proper slide, a proper data analysis to show where what is happening you know all of that so you find out that he found out that this thing is enjoyable for him and it has value it's driving management decision and it's making him important in the organization so he decided you know what i'd rather than me just even doing this on a on a best effort basis why not transition into this and so he transitioned into an into another role i think he asked for the role where he was going to be doing more of data rather than the medical doctor stuff and then he was doing it so well that you know the company was seeing the impact and he himself was seeing the impact and he kept wanting to do more and more and then at some point he found out that even what he wanted to do was beyond what he can do within the company he was in and he decided to just go on his own and the company engaged him as a consultant after and paid him much more than they were paying him a salary and then he has his own company now so that's just a very interesting story so you see how the little things, the Excel that we all have installed on our PC, how it's setting career. I'm an example, is Excel that has brought me here. It's not the financial modeling or the Power BI that I will put in my profile to make it look different. That actually brought me most of the things that, that set my career in this direction. It's the Excel that everybody says they know, that everybody says is in their PC, that everybody says there is no big deal to it. It's what has taken me on global stages too and all of that. So it's a common thread we see across many people's career paths who are making waves anyway so this is one another person who shared his own journey and had a lot of um, similarities with what them um, pringle to said and was really really interesting because he being a doctor you know and then for you to not abandon the old doctor career and to just be doing data analysis you know you'll be like ah, this is a big deal and then we had another another person that i deeply respect you know professor Kunle. Uh, we call him professor you if you are in the group our Excel group, you will know why we call him professor. So he to share his knowledge about how Excel sets his career, you know, set the motion his career, and how 
he, he said that he gave us a lot of examples towards the end, but more importantly, he showed us the power of defined names. I know someone who messaged me before a session and say he knows defined name, name range, but he always avoids it. He just for some reason just doesn't like using it, right? But when Kule was done with his session, man, I wish he was there, but then there's nobody who has mixed thoughts about defined names. And we'll see what see what Kunle was able to show us as being able to achieve with defined names. They are not going to want to start using it instantly. You know, your orient your, your perspective is going to change for good, you know, for, for pro in case if you have cons against it. So it's another session that I will advise people to watch. And when he shared his own his own journey to his own advice, oh boy, you know, it was almost on an emotional level at some point where, you know, he he joined the company and then in like weeks of joining the company, there was something they were trying to do that they had thought that that thing was going to take them months to do. It's a very big company. I know the company because I have, I have, I have, it's, the company is the biggest in their space in Nigeria and in Africa for what they do and it's in telecommunication space. So you will see that it must be a very, very big company, right? So they were, imagine for that kind of a company, uh, something that was so much of a big deal that they have budgeted that they're going to take weeks to do it and not one person was going to do it and you know what he spent days maybe over a weekend or something and he did it because of his knowledge of programming and excel and automation and he finished it and they were their jaws were on the ground <laughs> and you know what when they were doing one uh, it was like maybe end of year party or something right so he is not the party type. So someone who knows him well knew that he was probably not going to attend and the thing was going to end up into late at night. And so he he needs to leave early for his for his house too and all of that. So the person knew something was happening on that G and told him that, okay, you must be in that meeting. Don't me, you must mandatorily be there is a is a is a command and all that. Guess what? They gave him an award. Somebody that is just like, I don't know, maybe two months or three months in the company, they gave him an award for the year. There were so many things they gave him because of just that thing, right? And that thing set up his profile. He's, he's, he's now a consultant too, but you know, that's Excel. That is the power of Excel. So again, if you want to get some of those motivation, go and watch that one. Uh, you can see the guy in the picture, right? If you don't know him, I don't know what to say again, no. And you you are in the Excel space, you don't know him. I just um no comment. So we had Bill Jelen, Mr. Excel himself, and it was awesome. Like, you know, he taught us things, but more importantly, it was more of an interactive session. He told us his journey, you know, how how the old Mr. Excel started. So he was one of those who start who did the first thing, um, like blogs. So I don't know if you have searched for anything online. Search for anything online, most of the answers, when it comes to Excel, you will see Mr. Excel as part of the answers uh, website that will come up, right? So he started it, I think, in year 20, 1999, even when the internet was so young, and he never thought anything big was gonna come out of it, but that changed his career, and you know, he's gone around the world, he's, Microsoft engages him in so many things, he even told us how, when he complains about some things, you know, they take it seriously, and they fix it, and he has like the on his on his on his let me just this I can be an exaggeration. He has on his on his on his phone, you know, the numbers of all the different people that do different aspects of Excel. And anyway, I'm just trying to show us that uh, this session was a very high opening one to see who is even the Bill Jelen that we he has written so many books. I have so many of his books. You know, I use these books to also learn when I started my own journey in year 2011. Okay, so uh, we had we had him and he, he was very very open to us. He told us so many things that were sometimes even on a personal note for him. And then we have our own main guy. He's also on this session, uh, Engineer T. So Engineer Tunde, you know, he did a, he did an African style for us, even on his um, attire for that we use for the I, uh, event flyer. It was Nigerian attire. Then he tried to bring home the points. You know how all these things that we see, we, we come about softwares we use online, 
So for him, he works in the engineering space. And uh, some of the engineering things they do is more of the, in the civil engineering and I think maybe also mining related because some of the things he talks about, I think he cuts across mining too. And then he, he showed us how some of the tools that they pay money to use, you know, and you will think you will have to use some really sophisticated tool. He, because of his knowledge of Excel, started doing them in Excel and getting more flexibility because you can start making them to look like 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 automated. You know, he talked about how there's a report that before, if the customer changes something, you will have to go and change it on like maybe 20 different sheets or pages. But then with Excel, he automated it that before, when the customer make those kind of requests, you know, it will take them three days or one week to make the change and come back because you have to change that thing in multiple places. And it's like a big project, right? So with Excel, it was able to do it that the customer asked for that kind of a change again, and in minutes, he has sent it. And the customer had to call him and said, uh, do you understand what I'm asking for? And he said, yes, we have, we understand we have done it. The customer could not believe because normally it takes days before they get back to him. So he told us many things about how in the construction space, in the engineering space, how Excel too, you know, can be a tool that can improve your productivity. It cannot substitute for the technical things, but it can become as if you have like five hands, maybe six hands. It will be as if you are more than one person <laughs> because you are able to tie so many things into, uh, tie a lot together. Even his presentation was Excel, okay? So it's one session that, in fact, uh, I'm going to try and watch it again. Then we had another session that was again from Pingul and it was on a, um, Excel arrays, you know, and he, he gave it a, a, a nice touch into how, you know, you can do some of the things that are like AI in itself, prediction, and a component of AI, even with the Excel that you have, right? So people began to talk about some things that are like conk. So people are like, ah, this class is ahead, it's, it's above my, my understanding, you know. We talked about some formulas, um, more matrix multiplication, you know, he talked about some things that even involved maximization, optimization in Excel. It was interesting. So some people said that it was not easy for them to understand, but those who were in that line said, oh, it was high opening. They never knew Excel could do it, and they were going to watch the session again, and they were going to see how they were applied it in their own work. So yes, that's what we covered in that one. Then we had another very interesting session from Cynthia, our own uh, superwoman. So Cynthia shared with us our own journey, how she went from being uh, like an office assistant, you know, where they just want to relegate you to data entry, just be entering, this is what we'll buy, this is what, and she didn't like it, which was, uh, that, that was what people find inspiring. She knew that she can do much more than what that role was requiring from her. So she tried to do much more in the role, but then because the role was already uh, was already like a data uh, office ad assistant kind of role, so she cannot shift her office assistant work and want to do only data analysis, right? So she decided she was going to switch job. So right there and there, she started the. Uh, learning, going online, reading, studying, even when she knew what she was learning, she cannot apply it in her job. She said, first of all, I will learn. She paid money for trainings and she dedicatedly learned and then she started uh, uh, um, adjusting her CV to reflect what she was learning. And then she was also trying to look for jobs that we now require her to use. But every time she goes for an interview, they will look at her CV, they will see that she has been doing admin jobs they will want to give her admin role. They don't want to give her another job, you know. So it was frustrating for her for like one and a half years. So at some point, she now said, okay, she resigned that job. She decided to now take like months and dedicatedly just be learning everything data and analysis related. Uh, so that she was do, she was tired of people telling her that your job that you're doing, your CV is showing you are doing office admin, office admin, secretary, secretary. She said she doesn't want that anymore. So she had to stop that secretary job, right? 
which was funny, you know. <laughs> I was like, you have, you have liver, I can only resign a job, man. And so, but that was it for her. That was how strongly she followed her passion. And then uh, she went, she was frustrated, actually, because she was not getting the job still. So at some point, she just gave up and started going again for her secretary um, job opportunity. So she now went for one job interview that was for secretary role. But when, she, when they saw her CV and her profile, they were like, ah, you have a whole lot of skills and learning and, and, and expertise and investment you've made on yourself in this data analysis space. You know what? We are not going to give you this job. We are going to create another role that will be called insight analyst, that will be a data analysis role, and that's the one we are going to hire you for. You know what? We're going to hire somebody else. So, and that was how she got the job she's into, and she's now doing the data analysis she wanted, she wants, she has always wanted to do. So that's why she explained how she transited, how she did a career transition, Excel, based on Excel. And she's the kind of person that was hungry for knowledge. She's already already learning SQL and Power BI and other things. But then uh, for anybody who has always had that problem of how will I transition, go and watch that session. Then we had somebody that is like a magician, you know, George Lungu. This guy is, you know, when they say somebody is, um, is he, you know, those guys that just know numbers, do calculations by them so on their, on their, from their head. He is that kind of person. He has a PhD in imaging. He has, he's, he's, knowledge wise, he's there. But then imagine, before the session, while we were trying to set up the session, there was an echo. And from it, it was like, oh, Michael, you must be like 6,000 kilometers from me. He gave me an exact distance that we now went and checked Google and checked Lagos to California. I think he's based in California, the distance. And it was like very close to what he said. And I'm like, and he said it's because of the, there was a, so anyway, the point I'm trying to bring out is what he does with Excel is on another level. It does games, it does um, things that are like simulation, it does things that uh, I don't even want to attempt to do them because I keep thinking it's beyond me. Those are the kind of things it does with Excel. Maybe I should just show you some of it. has his own website where it demonstrates it. And then maybe when you see for yourself, you will know that uh, Excel is powerful. And it explained how Unfortunately, some of these things made him like a threat in companies he worked with because they would have software they are using and he would just, one week, he would build something that would replicate all what that software was doing and do much more. So this is Excel. Oh, what you are seeing, something shooting, like a shooting game. <laughs> it's Excel. This one too is Excel, a, an internal combustion engine. You know, the, all of these things are Excel, you know, that he used to build them and he showed us the background. He showed us, he taught us how to build some of them taught us how to create all this movement, taught us everything. And some of us started asking that, can he create a course? And he said he was going to create a course and he was going to inform us. So if you're interested in his course, just, uh, I don't know, maybe you message me and then I will pass you your, it's just your email he needs. So he will send you the, inf it was like, he was going to give us a special consideration and let us be aware and then we can register for the course. So anyway, uh, this is Excel. That's just what I want you to know. And someone is raising his hands up. Yes, sir. Please, you can ask your question. You can unmute and ask. Whose hand is up? Let me look for. So the person whose hand is up, uh, Robinson, your hand is up. I guess it's a question you have. Okay, now I can hear you. I can. I don't have access to the chat, so I can't send my email across. Oh, you don't have access to the... Okay, uh, how do we do that now? Yeah, the second person complaining about this, I don't know what why why that can be. I have to find out after today. Uh, okay, what I will do is I'm going to write my email on the screen. So what you have to just do is just send me a blank email or something so that at least I'll just have your email address. I think that was the only thing he needed. It was just our email address that he needed for him to share with us the details. So if you just send me a blank email, 
or just send me anything. It's not compulsory. You, as long as I look at it that you send it to me at this time, I will put one and two together. I know that it's because of this you send it to me. So if you send me an email at mike at urbizedg.com, I'm going to get it. Okay, so and uh, that was that session. Let me go back to our slide. And then we had another session by the guru, Victor Momo, and this was on the power of a single formula, which um, showed us some product. You know, the amazing things you can do with some product. And so this one, people found it interesting that we now said you should do part two. <laughs> so you had to do part two for us, right? But it was a very interesting session. People were like, they wanted more and more. Then after that, we had another session by Harlan Murray. Have you heard of London uh, Excel Club? So London Excel Meetup. So this is the convenience of that London. It's a very popular where all the who's and who in Excel world always gather. You know, if you want to see all the big people that you've been coming across online, maybe by books or on LinkedIn courses, all the guys that they are like, they're like semi-gods or really demigods in Excel world. Just go and join any of the London Excel meetup event. You will see a lot of them there. And you can, if you join, let me tell you a trick. If you join before the session starts, you can even jest with them. You can chat with them because they always have these uh, almost like family-like conversations before. And if you wait till after the session ends, you can also, again, still gist and like that, ask them whatever personal questions you want to ask. But anyway, we had Alan Murray and he did, man, he can't even now started looking like something I did not know by the time it was done, you know. He showed us some really amazing things you can do with counties that many of us are not aware of. And uh, if you're a finance person, counties is one of your formulas and some is, you know, it's, a, it's, a, it's an accountant's formula if you don't know. <laughs> so you better come and get, make sure you watch that video so that you will be aware of the tricks that you should, uh, and if you're a salesperson too, yeah, it's one salespeople, accountants, and MIS guys, counting some if it's like pivotable to guys like in those fields. So uh, you can go and watch that session. Then we had Victor Momo again to do justice to the some product by popular demand. They said he must come again, you know, and finish the some product. So he came back a second time to finish the some product and people still wanted more. <laughs> so that formula is one that um, you is a very powerful formula anyway that you should be aware of. Then we had Paul Kelly. Paul Kelly is the, is the ninja, is the global, when it comes to, to VBA, is the one that holds those that, that domain. Actually, there are like three people I know. There's Charles, the first Excel Charles. There's a uh, there's one other person I can't remember his name, and then there's a uh, Paul Kelly. But Paul Kelly, I think, is much more visible, and he's just like the guru when it comes to VBA. You know, he just strongly controls that domain, and then, so he showed us a lot of insights. You know, into VBA, into how you do even do some. So he decided to pick advanced filter as a case study. And he showed us some interesting things. I learned something from his session in Advanced Filter that I never knew all of my 10 years of teaching and knowing Excel and knowing even Advanced Filter or using Filter. So uh, it's something you should watch if you are interested in Advanced Filter and also if you are interested in VBA, okay? So from there, we had another session that I, I handled, which was on forecasting with seasonality scenarios and sensitivity analysis. So for those who joined late, I'm going to post again the link of the slides. Uh, those who are not able to access the chat, you will have to maybe just wait for when we share the, the recording video, when we post the recording, the video recording. So the video recording is always on, on YouTube. So if you just go there, or if you are on the community, you will get emails. I didn't send email this week because I was struggling to finish the slides. <laughs> so uh, anyway, I'm just trying to point out that this is one session that um, a lot of people 
uh, felt, okay, this is one session where I felt that people always think you can't do them with the Excel. You can't do seasonality with the Excel. You can't do scenario and sensitivity analysis with the Excel. You can, they are there. So I decided to show people you can even do triple exponential smoothing, time series analysis in Excel. It is there. You are not writing any code. It's just to know that there is a place you go to and you find those tools and you can specify what will happen to uh, what will happen for omitted data, what will happen for seasonality, and all of those things you specify. They are all there. Okay, so then we had this is the last session, last week one. Conditional formatting and custom formatting, where I showed the magic of conditional formatting and then custom formatting. So this was the last session up until now. So today is the 32nd session. So again, you can go check it out. So in the PowerPoint, you see that like, the videos are embedded. So you can even watch the one that you're interested in right there from the PowerPoint deck. So thank you very, very much. And uh, come to the end of today's session. Any questions? So it's just a recap of what we have done. We've done a lot. So we've done 31 sessions. I was proud of myself. I'm like, and this 31 is a 31 times three because I do Excel, I do financial modeling, and I do Power BI. My eyes are turning me already. I don't know where I'll get the energy to do for Power BI today. Fortunately, today we didn't get any guest presenter. So please help us. We need help. We need help with getting speakers. Let me even quickly show you. Uh, so we have a, a rooster where we we keep track of um, of who we have gotten. I'm struggling to get people. Please, if you know Nigerians, if you know foreigners, that we can uh, contact and bring them, you know. And if they are close to you, please help us talk to them because especially Nigerians. Uh, I don't know when I talk to them and I don't have relationship with them. They just, they give me a long date. <laughs> they start telling me that, uh, okay, maybe they don't kind of take me seriously. That's what I think. But maybe if you talk to them, maybe you know them already. And then you talk to them, maybe they will, they will say it as something that, oh, maybe this community is worth it or I don't know. So if you can see, this is today. Today is here. You can see, I, didn't have, I don't have any single person. <laughs> uh, I'm lucky. I even have to, I need to contact Mr. Joshua. I need to let him know on time. But this people, this person, this is a is is a, one of the program managers in Microsoft. He's going to talk to us about Office Script. He's also the big names in Power BI. Uh, Mr. Joshua is a fellow of uh, of ICANN. He's an FCA. He's a stalwart in the finance. He's been a he's been a he's been a CFO. He's so he's someone who will gain from his. Oh, okay, someone is already giving me volunteer. Zena Balogun, I, I'm going to reach out to her. Thank you. So somebody has volunteers, Zena Balogun. I need more volunteers, please. Uh, David, you've not given me date, so you are giving me somebody else's name. You have not, I think, oh, have you given me date? I think you have given me date, too. How come I've not put it here? That we have done flyer, okay, that's true. Ah, I've not put it here. I'm going to put it here. I know you've given me date. We've even done the flyer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to come. I'll have to quickly put it before I go and do mistake. Oh, awesome. It's today. Awesome. Great. Where is the... Ah, thank God you are here. I made mistake. I even need help. So I've gotten help from people to help me with uh, keeping track. So today session for Power BI, I'm going to share the link. Yeah. So thank you for even, I even need to quickly also remind the people that have sent the flyer to. Victor is today. Victor is, is Victor today? There's problem. <laughs> Let me go and check.
Thanks. Uh, thanks, uh, David. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to check for Victor. Uh, that's what happens when. So the good thing is now I. Victor is not today. I have our conversations. We are trying to get a date. That's where our conversation has ended. Um, why you to? Aha. Why you? He yeah, had done. Why you to do a session today? I'm messaging him already. Okay. So. It's not today, I've checked. It's yours that is today, and I forgot to add it here. But it's good as we are here right now. And I think we are having two sessions from you. I don't know if I've concluded on the other dates. Let me just check. Have we concluded on the other dates? Okay, we have not concluded on the other dates. Yeah, okay, I agree. So thank you for that. Okay, so I need to quickly go and do publicity for the next one. Well, thank you. Okay, I should put you a pre-ending. A pre-ending is 25. So let me just add it there right now. A pre-ending is 25. Oh, April. David. Uh, that's what happens when you have a very crazy week. You just see that you start dropping balls in places you shouldn't. So thank you very much and uh, see you all. Let me give you the link for joining uh, the Power BI session we have next. So I'm going to give you the link. Uh, so the Power BI session we have next. Uh, control V. Power BI session we have next is starting. Okay, I will end the session. I will drop the link. You will always be able to see it in the chat box, right? So so that I don't take too much time. Just check the chat box. Even if I have ended the session, you will see the link for joining for David's session. So thank you. See you in about 50-something minutes time. <laughs>